Greetings hobbyists, this is Artisans of Vool, and in this video we're going to have a look at how we can customise the appearance of Nsolve. So recently we've been doing a few videos on Nsolve and its different functions, let's just go into edge mode for this object and activate Nsolve. And you can see how I like my Nsolve setup, and this might look quite different to yours. I've got a larger range of tools showing in some ways, but I've also selected some tools that I don't want to be visible. There are also other ways of customising Nsolve by selecting what buttons we can use as shortcuts so I don't even have to keep selecting certain tools. For example, if I want to use the dissolve function, I've set this up so I can just press Alt and click and it will just use the dissolve function as we go. And this makes Nsolve fantastically customisable, more so than probably most add-ons that I've used. So let's have a look at exactly how we can do this. So to start with, this is probably what your Nsolve toolset looks like. You have the Nsolve tools here, and if you want to, you can bring up the Nsuite tools by going into it on the left hand side. Now what you might have noticed is that I had both of these tool sets showing at the same time, and you can do that within Nsolve, not Nsuite. So to do this, you've got two ways. So make sure you go into Nsolve, not Nsuite, and then you can either hit D to bring up the helper menu here, or you can come up to the top left hand corner and you've got the settings menu up here which you can do various similar things. Now I just want to highlight that most of the time when I mention one or the other you can do it on both. I'm generally going to show this on the helper menu just so it's a little bit larger and easier to see. So when we come to this you'll notice that we have Nsolve or Nsuite and we can come and look at a range of different drop down menus and we can also swap between them here as well, we don't always have to come over to the side on the left. But most importantly, in Nsolve, the icon at the top, you've got the option, if we have a look at this I, to turn Nsuite on as well. So you've got both of these sets of tools, and that's my preferred way of working. I like to have both tool sets visible at the same time. We can also click and drag these tools to anywhere you want, so I generally have them a little bit more spaced out. Now there is a lot more we can do with this as well, if you prefer to have them both vertically, if you hold down one of them and drag it so you're still moving it and you press F, you can swap them from being horizontal to vertical or back the other way. So if you like both of your tool sets in the same place, or maybe you want them all at the top of your screen, you can do that should you choose to. I actually prefer mine in the way that they are normally laid out, so I'm gonna stick with that. The other thing we can do is change the size of them once again, if you hold on the rectangle, click and drag them to move it around. If you press down on the S key and keep your finger held down and drag to the right, you'll get an increase in the size and to the left you can make them absolutely tiny. So I'm going to go with something about there. I prefer this size. And being a slight pedant, I like to then use F to flip this round and then I'm going to scale this up so that they're as close to the same size as possible. Otherwise, I just find it a little bit annoying. So let's go to about there, and then I'm just gonna flip them back to here. So I find this makes my tools really nice and easy to see. The other thing I want to do is get rid of some of the tools that I'm just not gonna find particularly relevant. For example, I've been using Blender a long time, and while I like the ability to click on these tools to use certain functions, Using, for example, the edge loop tool with Control and R, while it's a little bit of an odd movement on the keyboard, is pretty much muscle memory for me now. I don't even need to look at the keyboard to do it. I'll just hit it and it will work. So I don't need, for example, this edge loop function here, but the hard edge loop, where I can do this on an object that you normally couldn't put an edge loop in, is really useful to have. So I definitely want to keep that. So what we want to be able to do is pick some of these icons to keep and some of them to get rid of. And again, either in the menu in the top left hand corner or in the D menu, I can come to in suite and I can get rid of any of these icons that I don't want. For example, if I don't want the loop cut tool, I can just come to it and click the minus key and you'll notice it disappeared from the bottom. At any point you can click plus. So at the moment we've taken off the loop cut and I can bring it back and you'll notice it goes to the end. Well, I can also D, find loop cut, and move it up. So I can change the positioning of these icons to maybe have more of the useful ones or the ones that I think of going together in a similar place. I'm going to get rid of loop cut again. I'm also going to get rid of the line tool. I just don't find it particularly useful. 
though I can always bring it back if I need it. And finally, I'm gonna get rid of the Smart Loop Select tool because I don't necessarily need that as much because I know that I can hold down Control and right click on an edge and it will try to select through an end gone anyway. So I don't need that because I've got the shortcut. I'm also probably gonna get rid of this Offset Edges because I have another version of Offset Edges on the End Solve tools. So let's just get rid of the Offset tool as well. So this is me happy with my two tool sets at this point. I don't need to remove any of the other ones. I'm perfectly happy with this set. But end suite. Now I also have a line tool on the end solve set. So I'm going to come here and do exactly the same thing for end solve. But you'll notice here, in a slightly different thing, because we've got to set all of our buttons, we'll talk to that later. I have to come to options, and actually here you can select both of them at the same time as long as they're both visible. So let's come here and get rid of the line tool. So you could have also done this from here if you wanted to because they're showing up in EndSolve. So that's me having customized my icons and me being me, knowing that this has got eight icons on both tool sets is pleasing for some reason. There we go, that's just how my brain works. So that's that set up the way that I want them to be. So that's how to control your tools. The other thing that we can set up is we can set up shortcuts for us to use tools in a way without having to come to the end solve buttons here and selecting, let's say, collapse. I want to be able to do this for as many as possible just from the keyboard. So for example, I've got it set up that I can just press shift and merge some vertices together. Let's go into vertex mode. So I can just shift and drag and move them around. And that is controlled again in two places. If I press D, in my EndSolve helper, I can set all of those buttons here. So at the moment, you can see that left mouse button is set as Select. Shift is set as Merge. Control is set as Collapse. And Alt is set as Dissolve. And I can change any of these two different options. And importantly, I can click where I want these to have different submenus or sub tools enabled. For example, Merge, I have Multi-Merge enabled all the time. So if I have multiple vertices selected, I can press Shift and drag them and move them both in one go, or I can just have one and Shift to merge that one. So I like to have that always selected. I don't, for the Merge tool, need to have Merge at center because I know that if I click with, in this instance, Shift and drag to here, if I press Alt, it will go to the middle. So I haven't, let's bring up the D menu, got multi-merge set to center merge. So we can set this up in the D menu. The other place we can set this up is in this top bar. So again, anything that I click here, it will be set to the Shift button, the Control button, or the Alt button. So I could, for example, instead of having Dissolve, have Slide if I preferred that. I'm gonna put that back to Dissolve. So this makes it very, very easy to be able to select various different tools really quickly without having to come down. We can use our keys and we can get used to these very quickly to be able to do the different functions. So this is all very useful, but what if you want to have it set up in different ways depending on what tasks you're completing? Maybe I've got this to try and reduce the number of vertices that I've got in something I'm cleaning up, but I might have one where I need to be maybe joining different things together so I want to have some different sets of tools and I want to be able to not have to click through each time and change them if I've got maybe two sets of tools that I constantly want to use. Well, luckily we've got this button here, which is our personas. And you can see I've created a persona here, which is my standard persona. And I can also select what sub menus I wanted as part of this persona and it's saved. So I wanted to create a new persona. I can just click plus. So we've got a new persona. I'm gonna name this as alternative. And there I want, still want to have my left mouse button select. Maybe instead I want my shift to be join and I do want to be able to multi-join and I want to be able to snap to edges. So let's go with that. Maybe I want to have my control key set to be knife and maybe my alt key I want to have a slide. So you can change this as much as you want setting up your new persona. And at any point I can either click apply persona so it swaps it or I just come here and click and apply. Come here, click and apply. So it's really easy to do and then swap between those different setups that you've got. And you don't have to necessarily come all the way to the bottom. You can just come there as well. 
So this means not only are these tool menus really easy to set up, you can also have different tasks assigned to different setups that you can flip between. And a lot of the time, actually, I will have the first two keys of the same thing because I often use select and merge and I'll change what the control and alt buttons do. Now, the final thing that I need to mention is that if you leave Blender, this will all reset to the way it is as standard. And that's because they've made quite an interesting choice with Ensolve. I really like this choice. I love this customizability and I think it's so much easier to see this way but we are actually secretly modifying the settings of this add-on. Similarly for other add-ons, how you do in the preference menu. So for example, if I had another add-on here, most of the time this comes in the preference menu, but here there's very little to be able to select from. There's some things for sizes and some things for colors, but we don't have all of these options that we were doing. That's because all of the options are being done on your main viewport, which I think is such a clever option as it's so much more visual. And I hope more add-ons start to do something like this too. However, what is very important is that in the back of this add-on, this is affecting hidden parts of your add-on settings. You just can't see them here, which means that if you want this to be here next time you come into Blender, you do still need to go into edit preferences and hit save preferences. And that will save all of the changes that you've made so that it looks like this next time you come into Blender. You also get a bit of a note here. If you go into your persona setting, it does say you need to save preferences to keep your changes. They're not keeping this a secret, but it is something that I've heard a couple of people missing out on or not having seen. So hopefully that's gonna help you with your Ensolve setup. If you think this video is deserving, please do hit the like button. It helps share it around for other people to see it more easily. And if you haven't seen the other videos on Ensolve, there is a link in the description to the playlist on the Ensolve tools so you can have a look through them. At the moment, the only thing that we haven't covered is Nflow, but I will be going on to that in the future. So if you want to be notified about when that's happened, make sure you hit subscribe and that bell icon so you're aware of when those videos are up. Have a great day, guys.